Greetings to you. My name is Pam Smith and I'm the pastor here at Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lakeland, Florida. And a warm welcome to each of you joining us for this time of prayer and praise. It's fitting, I think, that we take this time in the middle of the day, um, some of our morning tasks completed, more yet to do this afternoon, and a time to kind of put those to the side and create a, a space in which we can remember who and whose we are. So I invite you, as I always do, to set aside the to-do list, the task list, the, the clutter of the day that may surround our workspace and finds its way into our brains and into our being. And let all of that go to the wayside for just a few moments as we, as we come together as God's people. One of my favorite hymns in our ELW is the hymn that's titled Lord of All Hopefulness. Lovely, lovely melody that tracks God's presence with us through each stage of our day. And so hear these words then in the second verse. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands are skilled at the plain and the lathe, be there at our labors and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. O oh God, come to my assistance. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, at midday you give us a time of rest. May we accept it gratefully and be strengthened by it to serve you and our neighbor through Jesus, the Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so today for our commemorations, we are commemorating musicians. Um, Johann Sebastian Bach, Heinrich Schutz, and George Frederick Handel. Um, Bach is well known to many of us. He was born in 1685 to a family of musicians. And by the age of 18, he was playing violin and organ and was composing. He served at a number of Lutheran churches in Germany. And most significantly, he was at St. Thomas and at St. Nicholas. He was a very prolific composer. Over 300 cantatas have been uh, written by him. And I think it's interesting that um, a lot of the composition that he did, he did as an ordinary part of being a church musician. So every Sunday, he had a new composition. Um, very, very gifted indeed. He was a very religious person and very introspective, and I'm certain that that helped shape his composition as well. He died in 1750. Also born in 1685 was George Frederick Handel. Um, his father died when he was very, very young, I think around 10 or 11 years old, if I remember correctly. He went on to study law, as did um, Bach, but then left that to pursue a life of music. He was known for Italian operas, but as they declined in popularity, he turned to the oratoria as a style. And the most famous of his oratorias, of course, was the Messiah. Now, not only was he an accomplished musician, but he also had a very generous heart and was very much involved in public affairs and the giving of gifts for the public good. He died in 1759. He and Bach were certainly contemporaries, though the plans for them to meet when Handel was on the continent never materialized. Much earlier than um, Handel or Bach, was Heinrich Schutz, who was born in 1585. As a young man, he too began to study law, but was drawn into music and began to serve as an organist. He composed many choral settings that showed a mastery of biblical texts 
an important way of communicating the truths of scripture. And he died in 1672. And as we commemorate these three musicians, we are mindful of the overall gift of music to the church and how music has shaped our worship life and perhaps even our prayer life. Let us pray. Oh God, you created all that is, all that is beautiful, all that can come together and rejoice and offer praise and worship to you. We give you thanks for these three musicians whom we commemorate today. And we give you thanks particularly for all of the musicians who are serving your church today, using the gift of music, the gift of song, the gift of melody, the gift of chord, to explain, to teach, and to proclaim the truths of Holy Scripture. May we join into that music, Lord. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting one and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. Together. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. And our reading is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. The prophet writes, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which, was, which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good. Delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he was near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your 
ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These words of the prophet Isaiah, written to the people who had been in exile and now had returned to their homeland, to the land of Israel, to the land that had been decimated by the uh, Babylonians, a land that had been deserted for decades. They were in exile perhaps for 70 years a land that had been um, occupied, not occupied, had been lived in by the weak and the old, the infirm and the sick, who the Babylonians didn't even want to bring into their nation in exile. But people were back home, back in their land. And we all have had that sensation at one time or another of returning right? Whether it be after an extended time away in school or college or a time away on vacation, even a short one, we return home and it's, ah. And so the prophet says, yes, you are back. And this is what awaits you. Come, come, buy wine and milk, even if you don't have money. Enjoy the richest of food, Come to the waters. And then the prophet goes on to remind the people what God has done. I have made with you an everlasting covenant. A covenant, not a contract, not a tit for tat, but a covenant that is born of relationship. A covenant that is created by God with God's people. And a covenant that we, in our time, enter into through the waters of baptism. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Come to the waters. The waters in which we are washed, regenerated, made new, drawn into the community of faith, and marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever. And it is in this covenant relationship that we, along with the psalmist, can proclaim the greatness of God, the steadfast love of God, his mercy that endures forever. It is with the psalmist that we can say, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. Because that is the God who has created relationship with us the God who has shaped us and created us for relationship with him and with one another. And so it is that we proclaim, even in this midday time, that the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. And because of this, we praise him. Because of this, we link arms together in worship and praise. Thanks be to God. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, 
for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Today I have a, um, a short reading from this book we've used before, Jewish Prayers of Hope and Healing by Alden Solovey. The one that we look at today is titled, For Grace. All I am, all I have, all I'll become are present in this moment. Warmth and breath, love and compassion, silence and celebration, everything here, all gifts, present. What then, God of all being, what then of my choices? What will I make of the space between this breath and the next? Will I bring laughter and light, hope and faith, wonder and strength? Will I stand in humble service for all of my brothers and sisters? Maker of heaven and earth, grant us the wisdom to choose lives of grace, lives of vision and understanding, seeing each moment as a choice to bless our companions with strength and wisdom, with honor and respect. Blessed are the gentle moments of grace. Let us pray. O oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us in this day by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but remember that always we are walking in your sight. You have given us work to do and call us to use our talents for the good of all. Guide us through our day and teach us to live in the spirit who made us your children in the love that unites us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the Christ who walks with wounded feet teach us to walk in his ways. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands teach us how to serve. May we see the face of Christ in all whom we meet, and may all whom we meet see the face of Christ in us. And may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon us this day and forevermore. Amen.